Hey there guys, alright, today we're back with some more Blue Jay, and this time his new video, Absurd Historical Slang, that needs to come back. I can't think of any slang off the top of my head that needs to come back, so <laughs> we'll see if I agree or disagree with Blue Jay here. Now before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I'd love it if you join the Discord, follow me over to Twitch, and please do go check out... <clears throat> Please do go check out the two gaming channels here on YouTube. One is for edited content, the other is for stream vods. Blah, blah, blee, blah. Let's dive right in. Slang, idioms, Slang. jargon. The words we choose to hurl at each other's faces are just as much of a cultural fingerprint as the clothes we wear and the games we play. <laughs> uh, this one's my favorite. We've all had that one. Blue Jay, what the fuck? And friend who orders at Mexican restaurants like, Ah uh, yes, I'll have the enchilada y burrito con pollo, por favor. So you call them a f Kirby sucking b ping club penguin b iPad kid or something along those lines. But what if you're growing? Huh? Uh, I so here's the thing with me when I when it comes to me trying to like I get because I guess I kind of do the same. Like I don't go to that fucking extent. Um, but I also don't like I don't like I still do I guess a little bit of an accent or at least I try to. Say it the way it's said in, like, that language, in a way. And that's just because of, like, I guess being around people that say it that way, right? Like, I grew up with a friend whose family is from Pakistan. So I say it the way that he would say it, because that is the way, right? That is what I became the most familiar with. I didn't grow up, really, with the fucking... American way of saying it because I spent more time like with that friend saying it than Americans saying it right where the Americans would say it like Pakistan right whereas if I'm remembering how my friend would say it right I haven't hung out with him in a long time uh, um but he his way of pronouncing it would be like Pakistan which I think is the more accurate way of saying it um <clears throat> right and not the long a that Americans like to use, Pakistan. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm tired of the same old curses, slurs, and TikTok brain rot. I, I'm, uh, I don't really use uh, slurs. And crave a more refined lexicon to voraciously vivify vexatiously vulgar tongues. Well, God, he is so he's such a poet with words. Blue, you're such a poet, Blue Jay. Oh, worry not, my chitty faced chuckaboos. For in Today's circumbendibus, I'm gonna fill that no huh? knowledge box with enough slang, slurs, and silly syllables to spifflicate and higgledy piggledy clapperclaw some bottle headed addle pades. I really want to know how long he spends writing these scripts. Because if I were to try and do the shit that he does, it would take me so much longer than him. Now, of course, does he have years of experience in making these wacky scripts, right? Where he uses lots of <laughs> fucking like um alliteration um yes but also like i don't know i feel like i could never get to the point like where where i, I would not be able to have the turnaround time of blue jay um uh then again he probably treats this like a full-time job he probably puts in probably a few at least a few hours every day or something right devoted work time that could that could you know speed it up of course like Man, it's just, I still feel it, like, scrounging the fucking archives, the dictionaries, uh, the thesaurus, uh, thesaurus, thesauri, uh. Be cautious using the words you learned today. <laughs> yep. But go crazy in my discussion. Now, if you're anything like me, you're a big fan of exploiting the words you use on public- Yo, kids, nothing's more skibbity riz sigma than crossing the street with your eyes closed in Ohio. Like ...platforms to manipulate the masses. But as much as I love to gaslight, no one excels in weaponizing the silver tongue more than politicians. Dear- Hold on, does he write this like a proper script? Hold on, I'm trying to snoop here. Oh shit, fucking... Portal? Um, no. This looks like a notes thing. 
It's so blurry, I can't tell. Do you ever find yourself listening to an elected official and get confused by the words they use? Bees! The bees! I wonder what he means by that. Well, luckily for you, understanding the bias and reliability in the words used by important people has never been easier than with Ground News. Ground News is a website and app designed to give you an easier way to read the news. They gather related articles from around the world in one place, and every story comes with a visual breakdown of the place more readily throughout the cultures of the world. Ground News for sponsoring the video. In today's digital age, language flows more readily throughout the cultures of the world than ever before. And while that should mean we've achieved incredible levels of information availability, education, and human connection, what it really means is that there's just that many more people you need to shit talk in in-game lobby. Yep. Yep. And honestly, boomers still doubt the shit talking capability of us youngsters. Like, I've had conversations with some old people where they're like, oh, you know, you don't want to make that person, that boomer mad or whatever. They're, they're, they can be mean. And I'm like, mother. I played Call of Duty in middle school. I was exposed to the language of the adults when I was but a wee lad. I can handle a goddamn boomer. With the comfort of anonymity granted to us by our favorite little TikTok bricks, comment sections and threads across the internet. I can't believe eating pets is a topic in this debate because that's bad now. It's a major. When will these vegan agendas end? How about instead of Haitians, we let the hardworking have evolved into a constant battle of wits. And while many think they could just steal quotes from obscure indie films like The Princess Bride or V for <laughs> Vendetta and call it a day, a true master of the silver tongue must engage in more rigorous and refined study to fully weaponize a keen intellect. I'm talking, of course, about Fight Club, but in all seriousness, to really level up your- Hold on, Blue Jay, you're not supposed to talk about it, goddammit. ...yapping abilities, we're going to whip out the history books to study the wise words of our ancestors. The non-racist ones, at least. And to help stencil- eh, that's a bit hard. That's gonna be a very narrow field, Blue Jay. ...your name onto the list of eccentric conversationalists and or an FBI watch list, I've taken it upon myself to analyze the mountain of obsolete slang and idioms to condense it down to some that I think truly shine. So, naturally, 95% of it comes from poor 18th century British people. And <laughs> speaking of, what better way to learn the words of yesteryear than a little bit of immersion therapy? Let's say oh, no. you're walking down the streets of downtown Atlanta after a long night of drinking when you hear rustling coming from the alley beside you. You let out a sigh as you get ready to hand over your decoy phone and wallet because it's Atlanta when you see a magical gnome waddle out of the shadows and introduce waddle himself waddle. as Dasher in an adorable French accent. Brimming with glee, you bend over to hear his words of wisdom when, uh-oh, you forgot one crucial detail. You're still in Atlanta, and the gnome probably flips out a switchblade and stabs you in the liver, casting a spell that sends you back in time to 18th century England, but only after magically draining your 401k. After coming to, you find yourself lying in the dirt of a London dockyard, bleeding profusely from the gut. But hey, you're in Georgian London now. Having an open wound is pretty much par for the course here. Luckily for you, you catch the eye of a sweet-looking older lady who rushes up and asks you what happened. Now, given the crazy fiasco you just went through, you might say, after a bender, this Frenchified dash took a flourish with their magical gnome tool and tried to ice me after casting up my accounts. You then watch as her amiable face turns to one of terror as she gasps and responds, <gasps> In Abavite? Now, you're not quite sure what she means, but noting that horrified look on her face and the magical sounding words she used, you assume she's heard tales of these fantasy gnome scenarios before, and respond with, that's right. The old lady's eyes then widen even more before she quickly scurries off, leading you to believe that she's finding you some help. Now that you're waiting here wondering just how many pints of blood the human body has, and whether or not you actually saw a gnome or just Danny DeVito, it's the perfect <laughs> time to let you know that the lingo of the past doesn't perfectly align with the definitions of today. So even though you thought you were able to convey the mythical quackery you just experienced, what you actually said was you paid a sixpence to a flashy hooker with venereal disease for a quickie who turned out to have magical male genitalia and attempted to fart on you after you vomited. Huh? To which, in shock, the lady asked to clarify, a penis? To which you said, that's right. So you shouldn't be too surprised when you see the old lady return with a group of big, strong, angry men with sticks. This situation is what we'd refer to as an uh-oh spaghettios, or as these people would say, a cock of fuego, or, or as your mom would say, a Tuesday night. So
Popping more tears than Kanye's PR manager, you skedaddle skadoodle before you're made a fool when you lock eyes onto a tavern and figure, hey, if you're gonna be wounded, might as well self-medicate. But before you could partake in the most classic of British pastimes, you bump into a large mustachioed man. Top of the morning, son. Now, I see what you're off to, but before you go looking for hot seas getting a hickey, how about you reach for me bagel mystery? What's in there? <laughs> oh, I think you know, son. Come now, grab me sausage before- Come now, governor. Before you get clammed. <laughs> Whoa, calm down there, Eddie. This adorable little Eggman doppelganger isn't soliciting a handy on the threat of death. Clam- I mean, he could be. ...is actually slang for starved in these parts. He just doesn't want you to go hungry. But heart's ease and getting a hickey? Merely gin and getting tipsy, Eddie. How did hickey transform from being tipsy to a fucking- purple splotch that you get from fucking macking with someone. And you better get used to the alcohol slang, as being a Brit in the 1700s, free time activities were pretty much limited to either go drink or go die, with true gamers shooting for a combination of the two. So what this gentleman Swag. really said was, before you go get tipsy off some gin, how about you buy a sausage? As a bag o' mystery was a rather whimsical way of pointing out how not even God knows what's stuffed into these intestine-lined sacks of flesh. Uh -huh. Popularized in the 1850s, which I know we're currently in the 1700s, but this is my video, so you can all go eat a bag of Arborvites, this is exactly the kind of phrase I'd like to see make a comeback today, regardless of any potential problems it might pose. Just tap thine card here and your signature. Fortuitous! Two bags of mystery, my good sirs. Ah, what the? Is this a fucking hypodermic needle? A hey, wizard I may be, but power have I not over the workings of conjuration sausagery. You know, I ought to sue you. Ooh. A mage Ooh. always prepares runic protections from the mortal arts. What, a waiver? You son of a- <laughs> Come on, Colin, let's get out of here. But actually, doesn't it, like, you- As- it, it can't- isn't any contract that you sign that uh, it's null and void the moment physical injury is probable? Isn't that the isn't that isn't that the thing like to protect the people? Right? I thought that was a thing. C Colin. Escaping from that vaguely threatening encounter, or as they say here, an average British interaction, you finally watch your way into the tavern with your stomach thoroughly satisfied with meats of unknown origin and also still bleeding. But as you're walking through the door, a hand snaps shut on your arm. Brimming with fear, you turn towards who you assume to be the gang of angry men having finally caught up with you, but are relieved to see it's just a mere homeless man with a wild look in his eyes. Just a little crank, good sir. If I get candy, I promise I won't shoot the cat. Ah, good old crank. Finally, some street slang, even a white boy like you can recognize. Well, obviously you don't want this crazy meth head to kill a cat, and it's about time you got a side quest in this British fantasy land. Okay, just take it easy. Where can I get some meth around here? Uh-oh, he's looking pretty confused. <sighs> Great, what did he actually say? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. The term crank is a fascinating example of a word that has independently derived multiple slang definitions over the course of history. Similar to how a minor fling is not only slang for a short-term casual relationship, but can also refer to Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> While you and I I <laughs> Hi, today, no crank as those funny little rocks were pretty sure Aaron Rodgers smokes. In this time, it was slang for gin and water. So what he actually said was, Just a little gin and water, good sir. If I get drunk, I promise I won't throw up. This guy's not a homeless tweaker, Eddie. He's just British. Alright, yeah. I'll get you some gin. I'll give you some spanks. What? He'll give you some money. God damn it. As you're finally able to breach the entrance of the pub, you're met with quite the exquisite sight. This place is different from the modern day American bars that you're accustomed to, where you sit down at a sticky table next to that alcoholic that keeps saying, Haha, must be a hole at the bottom of my glass, before grabbing his keys and scouring the menu for a drink that does Let's see. Drafts, beer, it's beer, still beer. What more do you want from me, man? Brunch cocktail, white woman wonder. It's just a tequila sunrise. Yes, we've got your grenadine. Jalapeno business. The amazing buzz of gumball. Fast and furious under the influence. Non alcoholic. I'd probably I'm a cock I'm a cocktail boy. I don't like beer. Give me, give me the fruit. Give me the fruitiness. Doesn't taste like straight piss, but isn't too tasty that your immature friend from high school calls you gay, all while seeing how many alcoholics you can convince or find the drive home for a taste of power and listening to the bar's playlist of Journey and or the Black Keys and literally nothing else.
Hey, when enough of them are on the road, that's not a hazard, that's just skill-based matchmaking. Anyway, uh. the British taverns of old were more than just a place to speedrun liver failure. They were the beating hearts of their local communities, a place for socializing, for business and political meetings. The pub was where anyone could go at the end of the day to just let go and be themselves. So long as that wasn't gay or black. The room before you is dimly lit. Yeah. The floorboards creak as patrons walk beneath the low ceiling, dodging wooden beams, while the warmth from the open hearth enchants the atmosphere with a cozy ambiance. It's within these very walls that centuries of culture have been molded, shaping the fabric of the society around you, including the very slang you're learning about today. You make your way to the bartender as a smile grows on your face. Because even with all the trauma you've been through, the spell of the British pub is already starting to work its magic on you. Despite all the stress, all the hostilities, and no mixed stab wounds, you're beginning to believe that, against all odds, things just might turn out alright. Strip me naked? And the magic is gone. What are you talking about? Come on, give us a diddle. What is happening? <laughs> ah, just two more slang phrases for Jin. Again, I can't stress this enough. Why the fuck are there so many slang phrases for Jin? And literally, it is simpler and easier to just call it Jin. There really wasn't much else to do. Oh, right. Uh, two strip you nakeds? You'll do what to me now? Wrong pronoun, wrong pronoun. Duh, strip me nakeds to go, please. Sure, coming right up. Oh, and be careful now. You're sitting right next to an admiral of the narrow seas. Oh, uh, thank you for your service. <coughs> <coughs> That was slang, wasn't it? For a drunk who vomits into someone's lap, yes. Don't worry, lad. Voice Admiral of the Narrow Seas here to help clean you right up. Aww. <laughs> What's so funny? It's just, I'm happy you're learning. I just feel like I'm being tortured. <laughs> oh, yes. But anyway, a Vice Admiral of the Narrow Seas was slang for a drunken man that pees under the table into his companion's shoes, which apparently was a common enough occurrence to warrant a full phrase. Covered in more blood, piss, and puke than a Megan Fox relationship, you await patiently as the bartender brings you your drinks. Two stirrup cups for you, lad. A phrase for a parting drink given to guests who are taking their leave, typically drink on horseback. So now you have some fun new lingo to use to feel like a little cowboy the next time you're pulled over for a DUI. Say, what's your name, anyway? Oh, I'm Eddie. Jackie? No, it's Eddie. Oh. Max? Actually, it's Eddie. What the? You gotta be kidding me. What? Why? 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 So many different words for fucking gin. Just call it gin. What the fuck? Lightning! <laughs> Oh, come on! How many words do people have for gin? Quite the comical amount, actually. In fact, one of my primary sources, a classical dictionary of the vulgar tongue by Francis Gross, has over 25 terms for the liquor. I was surprised at first until I realized the lexicon was originally published following a period known as the gin craze in Britain, where, due to some salty pillow fighting going on between England and France, French brandy was restricted, causing cheap gin to skyrocket in popularity amongst London's poor. So intense was this popularity that Parliament passed a whopping five major acts just trying to get people to chill with the bottle. I know this might sound rather crazy, but if you want to understand the gin craze today, all you have to do is watch reruns of Ellen. As you grab your stirrup cups to complete your side quest, you hear someone yell, The launch is starting! Followed by the horrid screams emanating from a girl outside. Surely, you figure, the combination of a launch and woman in fear must mean Elon Musk is nearby, but that's a good one. As you open the door and mentally prepare for a 15 minute monologue of bullshit, you find out that there isn't an upcoming SpaceX launch, but a woman giving birth just outside. While you yet again misinterpreted the situation, luckily, you can ride this one out just as you would have if it was Elon that you'd come face to face with. Avoid physical contact, say ew that's gross, and advise them to stop having more kids. Rounding the corner with your drinks, you see a one-armed man crouching behind a barrel stand up and start approaching you. Careful now, Eddie. This sneaks me snacks having snaffler seeks to snaffle and snabble. And while you're busy laughing at what you assume to be a bit of amusing Dr. Seussian alliteration, a mean-spirited highwayman with large teeth comes up and mugs you before stabbing you to death. What? Are you serious? I don't know, maybe. What, what do you mean, maybe? Well, it could also mean this is a sneaky horse thief looking to rifle through your things so he can steal a wig for his pet snail. Slang is complicated, man. I still don't know if skibbity is a noun or verb. Well, look who we have here. I knew even the slugger beds would be drawn to the commotion. A slugger bed was a drone. Now, obviously, he doesn't mean the flying kind we're familiar with today. He means someone who can't wake up in the morning. But ironically, if you think about it, slugger bed is exactly what modern drones do, too. Uh, are you talking about the launch going on back there? <laughs> 
Good for you, Eddie. Way to use the local lingo. Yeah, the loss is poisoned, all right. What? Just another way of saying someone is big with child or pregnant. You could also say she sprained her ankle to say the same thing. How, how do those even relate? How do those even, like, like... I can understand maybe poisoned. It's a bit of a reach, but sprained her ankle? That one doesn't make any sense! But, as you've just experienced yourself, using these phrases today would undoubtedly lead to a lot of confusion. Uh. <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh, Jeremy, oh, I think I sprained my ankle. You sure did. <laughs> Congratulations, Jan. <coughs> no, Jeremy. <coughs> oh, God, I think I'm poisoned. Uh-oh, get poison control on the line. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, use my phone. Oh, I get it. Let's see if it's blue or pink. <coughs> I love gender reveals. Ah, uh, well. What the fuck? Glad that she's not dying then. Ah, I wouldn't go that far. She's still giving birth outside a pub in a London alley, pre-modern medicine. It's pretty much a coin oh, yeah, flip whether or not she becomes a statistic. The beauty of life, right? <laughs> Speaking of, let's see if you keep yours. Now, I'm sure you're wondering where me rammer is. I- I'm sure you wondering. I really don't want to know. He means his arm. Ah. Would I have ye know, I lost it fighting off a 30 foot know. sea lawyer with me bare hands in the middle of the blind man's holiday. And I took way more from that bloody beast than he got from me. Two excellent 18th century phrases, Eddie. A blind man's holiday is slang for the night or darkness, while a sea lawyer, as you may have guessed, is jargon for a shark. One of my favorite slangs, but also- Honestly? I think we need to bring back sea lawyer. Sea lawyer. I want to use that whenever I see a shark now. It, they are a sea lawyer. Quite ridiculous, as none of these guys are smart enough to pass the bar. That's right. Meh. So don't mess with me, son. I'm a bottom. Um, I really didn't need to know that. Not what you're thinking, Eddie. Amongst bruisers, a bottom is a hardy fellow who can take a good beating. So I guess in a way, it is... Same seems the same thing to me. What you're thinking. All right, all right, what do you want? I'll be a sneaks be snacks having snaffler. Yeah, yeah, I got that part. So which is it? Are you killing me or looking for a snail wig? Preferably a nice powdered one with the little ponytails. I don't have any wigs. Oh. Well, we'll be taking your shoes then. <laughs> Fine. And do you have any tape? What? Was that even invented? Ugh. <sighs> Surviving that snaffler encounter, you continue your journey to deliver your gin as you acquire yet more open wounds from shards of glass and your newly barefoot grippers. But not to worry, these cobblestones are covered in piss that's at least 20% oh. ethanol, so the only thing you're going to be infected with is shame. As you finally approach him, the wild-eyed alcoholic shoots to his feet, shaking more than an angry dad with Parkinson's. Bloody hell! Mm, he really milked the pigeon with this one. I assure you I did no such thing. To milk the pigeon just means to endeavor at impossibilities. He's saying you really pulled off something challenging. Oh, yeah, really had to slurp the pigeon milk to get this. Not really the way it's used, but I like the spirit. <laughs> You're a bit of a clunch. I like that. Listen, Colt, what say you and me go around back and suck the monkey till we're shitting through our teeth? Whoa, all right, buddy. I knew people were weird, but this is getting like VR chat weird. Fret not, Eddie. Remember the rule of thumb when talking to the English. When in doubt, out, they're talking about alcohol. To suck the monkey was actually the practice of secretly sucking liquor out of a cask or barrel with a straw, an activity so comically stupid that- Jesus Christ, they are alcohol- they, they're just alcohol- this is just an alcohol- what the fuck? Calling it something you could mistake for a Zootopia fanfic was considered oh. appropriate. And while the Brits may have reached Looney Tunes levels of alcoholic wackiness, the same couldn't be said for their bodily resilience, as newspapers reported numerous cases of people dying from the stunt. I would say that'd be a hilarious thing to see written on a tombstone. Known, but anyone slurping an 8,747 ounce big gulp of- do I try and read it? <laughs> On Monday evening, Mr. Humphreys held an inquest at the London Hospital relative to the death of Thomas Collins, age 29. A laborer employed in the- Hold on, hold on, I'm losing in the voice. It's Tuesday, innit? A laborer employed in the spirit vaults of the London docks and living at 12 Flower and Dean Street, Spiderfields. On Friday morning, deceased left home in good health to go to his work as usual. I'm losing it. At a quarter to eight the same night, he was brought home insensible, having been found by a fellow workman lying on the pavement opposite the Princess Alice Commercial Street. He smelled dreadfully of spirits and never becoming conscious was removed at two o'clock the following Saturday morning to the hospital, where the doctor pronounced life extinct. Deceased wife stated that she had heard her husband speak about sucking the monkey. She knew he used a bone for that purpose. The coroner said this was not the first case by many that had come under his notice. He no doubt most of the jury knew the meaning of sucking the monkey. A, bu a mutton bone was inserted in the bung of the barrel, which enabled the men to drop the raw spirit into their mouths. 
The deceased had contributed to his death, and no one was to blame but himself. Dr. Hughes, assistant medical officer, having stated death to be due to congestion of the brain consequent on drinking strong spirits, a verdict to that effect was recorded. I lost, there's, ugh. ...of ethanol probably doesn't have the kind of support structure that care about a proper burial. So, Eddie, what this guy actually said was, You're a bit of an awkward fellow. Listen, man, how about we both go suck liquor from caskets with straws until we puke out of our mouths? Um, I think I'll actually pass this time. Ah, no worries. How about we go fist the cow instead? Great, huh? what's this? Chug cow milk mixed with gin or something? Oh no, that's not an idiom. Oh, adding yet another tally to your daily trauma qu- Oh, that's now instead. I think I'll actually pass this time. Ah, no worries. How about we go fist the cow instead? Great, what's this? Chug cow milk mixed with gin or something? Oh no, that's not an idiom. No. No. Oh, no. Adding yet another tally to your daily trauma quota, you barge back into the pub not only to get clear of that frig pig, but to get clear yourself. And as luck would have it, you spot a woman holding an extra pair of men's shoes, undoubtedly taking off the feet of a wombledy cropped nick ninny. As cool as hobbits are, it's probably best to get them paws covered, so you approach the last to explain your situation. Hello, miss. Uh, how do you do? Ah, uh, another master of the wardrobe, are we? Oh, <laughs> you're, you're far too kind. No, she's not, Eddie. That wasn't a compliment. Come on, you're literally covered in puke. A master of the wardrobe was someone so desperate for a drink that they pawned their own clothes to pay for it. Oh, no, no, no. You see, I, I needed to bring some lightning to this drunkard outside, and after getting caught up in a launch and a run-in with a snaffler, you really have tongue enough for two sets of teeth, don't you? Before you compliment her sick, nasty alien reference, she's actually using a phrase for a talkative person, essentially saying one set of chompers isn't enough for someone who yaps as much as you do, a feeling I'm sure many of us can relate to. Hey, this is my friend Keith, but be careful, he's tongue enough for two sets of teeth. Oh, is that like some kind Kind of idiot. <laughs> Tongue can also be used in a quirky quirky response to someone asking how old you were. Hey, this is my friend Kevin here. He's the senior manager at my hedge fund. Oh, nice to meet you. That's really impressive. How old are you? <laughs> as old as my tongue and a little older than my teeth. What does that even mean? <laughs> there were actually quite the plethora of phrases to describe a talkative person. For example, you also had the term prattle basket. Huh, just a random basket. <laughs> so essentially, at the end of the day, Eddie, this lady is asking you to wrap it up. Right, uh, I, I was just hoping to take your kicks. <gasps> Uh-oh. While you've been doing your best to adapt to the contemporary slang, you inadvertently injected some of your modern tongue as well. So you didn't actually ask her for her extra pair of shoes, you asked the lady for her breeches. Oi! I'll give you a kick in the guts! Gah! Oh hey, what do you know? You're just talking about Jim. You're... not mad? Gods no! Every bloke in town's had a wild night with that one. <laughs> she's one of my cousins. Psst, that's just slang for harlot or prostitute, so she's not literally his cousin. I think. Uh, Britain, what the fuck? I mean, the phrase had to start somehow. Well, thanks, but do you guys drink anything other than gin? Why, it's rather rum. While you start to get excited at the prospect of finally another alcohol, around this time, rum was actually also slang for something fine, good, or valuable. And it did a lot of heavy lifting amongst the wretched British population, as it served as an adjective to form additional slang phrases. For example, you had a rum nab, which was a good hat. Or rum duke, meaning handsome chap. Make it rum bluffer to say jolly host. Or rum bung for a full tote. A rum bugger was a valuable mutt, and rum prancer a fine horse to strut. A rum doxy was a fine wench, rum fuddle a good drink to quench, rum peepers were good looking glasses, and a rum problem is what you have. No. -uh. Finishing your kick in the guts, you head to the bartender to freshen up your glass. Uh, you make a rum fuddle, my good man. I'll take another crank. Oh, you're pissing down me back. Another crank coming right up. I'm really hoping that just means I flattered him. Right on the money, Eddie. <laughs> I'm getting the hang Ooh, of this. Eddie. There you go. Careful when Quagswagon being off off and off. I hate the British. Starting to- The same. But not because of their alcoholism, just because they're British. Feel a bit of wobble in your knees, not only from the amount of alcohol in your blood, but from the increasing lack thereof it, you decide to look around to mingle with some of the local patrons to fully immerse in the pub culture. You're beginning to get a little chilly because, again, you've pretty much got the blood pressure of a quacking cheap by now. So you head on over to a group of men near the open hearth. He told me yes over some scandal broth that while we went here to soak, he'd join us after some snaffling. You figure you just might know who they're talking about, but first, let's add some context. Yes is just a contraction of the word yes 
yesterday, a must use for any conversational minimalists out there. But be careful contracting too much, because let's say you went to work after being sick with the cold the day before and someone asked you what happened, responding with yes infection could land you an HR meeting. Scandal broth along with prattle broth, chatter broth, and cat, you guessed it, lap, are all different ways to say tea, getting its definition hmm. from it being the beverage of choice for women who like to sit around gossiping, or as we would say today, spilling the tea. To soak was yet ah. another phrase for the great- See, that one, those make sense. There's a connection to our modern day v verbiage, lingo. Speaking ways. <laughs> British pastime. However, again, I would express caution using this one today, for asking people to soak with you could land you in hot water depending on their cultural background, particularly when it comes to Mormons. Um, I yeah. I think I might have run into that guy you're talking about. The group of men turn towards you as you make yourself known, and the gentleman who spoke previously responds, Did you now? The one Ramatodi to himself? T Toad eater? What does that mean? Exactly what it sounds like, Eddie. A toad eater was someone who was paid to eat live toads and was a must-see attraction at any Georgian era fair. The idea was that since people believe toads to be poisonous, a mischievous charlatan could miraculously cure them in order to sell their snake oil medicine. And now, to prove the curative properties of my phantasmal medicine, Johnny here will swallow a live toad. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Ribbit. Uh. Not the, not the sound effects. Why the sound effects, Blue Jay? <laughs> Shadow. <laughs> what the fuck? That's for my wife, you son of a bitch. Right. Well, uh, one heck? rammer you said? Yeah, I spoke with the coal outside. You did what now? Oh, so close, Eddie. Again, I appreciate the effort, but saying I spoke with the coal means you robbed the man. Well, well, well. Gather around, boys. It looks like I have to settle this coal by a stroke on his knob. Uh, stroke? Don't get too excited, champ. He's actually saying he's gonna punch you in the head. Yeah, and after that, yeah. I'll give you a blow on that jolly knob. Um, what is happening? Once more, just saying he's gonna beat your head in. Again, crucial not to misread here, as ideally we want to minimize your inevitable CTE. All three of us will have a pull on that noddle of yours. I'll mill that canister so good you won't be able to walk in the morning. Okay, these guys have to be hearing themselves. To have a pull means to have the advantage on something. He's essentially saying, by outnumbering you, clobbering your head in will be a piece of cake. So, in summary, now is an excellent time to start running. Uh. Crossing sticky floors, waving bye to whores, and sprinting out the doors, you're once again weak. God damn it, Blue Jay. Leading your way through the London slums. Running through all these streets and alleys, you're really starting to get to see the full glory of the great power that was 18th century England. So as you approach the top of a hill, you figure now would be an excellent time to take in the first-hand views of Georgian London. Let's take a look. Ah, what beauty. This magnificent architecture is what they refer to as the Industrial Revolution, or as we say today, an animation time saver. Hmm. Rounding a corner, you finally catch some luck as you run into a constable. Oh, thank God. <coughs> Sir, I'd like to make a report. I'm being chased down by some men from a pub back there, and, and I really had to heave my way out of there. Heave, you say? <coughs> That's right. Right then. Come now, son. I've got some ruffles for you. You're gonna get to polish the king's iron with your eyebrows. Now, you figure this could mean a few things. Maybe he's inviting you to become a specialized worker in the royal court, literally polishing the king's iron. Or perhaps they're asking you to jack him off. Either way, you suppose if you're gonna be hard at work for nobility, the potential reward far outweighs any downsides, even if that means sweat won't be the only bodily fluid you're drenched in. Okay, <coughs> sounds good. Uh, but when you say ruffles, are you talking about, like, the tasty treat? Oh, the spicy treat. No, Eddie. <laughs> when you told him you heaved your way out of the pub, you actually said you robbed the place. And to polish the king's iron with one's eyebrows actually was a saying for looking out of prison windows. You're very much so under arrest. What? No! <laughs> this is a mistake! Ugh, oh, you know, I reckon it's your execution day as well. What? No, this is absurd! Help me, God bird! <laughs> oh, flattery will get you everywhere, Eddie. But it doesn't literally mean you're being executed. He just means you need to be washed. You are absolutely painted in people's DNA after all. Say, aren't you the bloke that verbally assaulted Mrs. Locke earlier? Right then, I'm taking you in and you'll go up a ladder to bed. Okay, that one does mean execution. Please uh save me! Take me back to Atlanta! Oh, sure thing. What? You could have done that?
The whole time? Well, I could have, but what kind of teacher would I be if I did? An ethical one? <laughs> oh, please. I never took ethics class. Ugh, oh, I feel weak. Me so, Eddie, now that you got to soak in all the grime and culture, the people and customs, and the pubs and booze of 18th century London, how about it? Feeling ready to wag that silver tongue with a whole new palette of colorful slang? 22 minutes. Getting a little sloppy, Dasher. The liver was in the way of the aorta artery. Can't let him bend down next time. It messes up your aim. Good to run a few more drills tomorrow? Oui. Excellent. Oui. Obsolete slang. 12 out of 10 stars. Only one of those words I was like, yeah, we need to bring back. And it's the sea lawyer. I want to call sharks sea lawyers from now on. Well, that was absurd historical slang that does not need to come back. By Blue Jay. This was a hilarious video. I loved it. Really fucking. Oh my god. So much like Salmonella. So much like Salmonella with the humor. He's fucking going batshit crazy. I feel like every video has gotten wilder and wilder here with Blue Jay. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.